up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out of him two or three eunuchs. Um, and, they, and he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on her, the horses, and he trod her underfoot. So the, the eunuchs threw her out of the window, and then she hit the floor, and the horses trampled her, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, um, And when he was coming. Shalom, Elder. Shalom. And when he was coming, he did eat and drink and said, Go and see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And when they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than her skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. And wherefore they came again and told him and said, and he said, This is the word of Yahweh, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel, shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face yeah, of the yeah. field, and in the portion of Jezebel, <coughs> so they shall not say, this is Jezebel. Now that was a judgment from the Most High, because you got to use your imagination. She was probably a very, very attractive woman. Calm. Now, let's just put it this way, sometimes the most wicked women are the most attractive, Yeah, that's, right? what, uh, that's what the elder said the other day, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, she tried to use that as a mask to hide her wickedness. She tried to paint up her face, and that like, oh, she ain't done no wickedness. What does the scripture say? A woman eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, well, I've done no wickedness. Yeah. So that spirit, that same spirit that she was in is back on this earth today where a lot of our women, not just our women, but women in general, a lot of women think that they're too pretty to be judged. Right. Like that they're somehow um, above the realm of, yeah. like the Most High is not going to judge me because I'm, I'm you know, I'm so hot. Yeah, yeah. Well, it ain't about that. What does this equal the ninth chapter say? Slay utterly old and young, mm. both maids and maidens and little children and women. So basically, you can't hide your wickedness behind trying trying to paint your face. Yeah. But that's exactly what a lot of women Pretty do. Face. They'll try and make themselves look good on the outside, but inside really there's all kind of wickedness going on, mm. evil intentions and all kinds of stuff. But they'll try and hide it. And some will get away with it. Yeah. But you know, when you're a spiritual man, you see through these things. So that was an example for the for all the Jezebels that come after her. Exactly. All the examples. And what did it say? They they, they didn't find anything of her. Mm. Like that body that she took great pride in. Yeah. It was eaten by dogs, so nothing was left except yeah. the skull yeah. and the palms of her hands. That's why the most I made the point. Yeah. Like you know, what, you thought you were so 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 banging so bad. I'm gonna make a point by destroying your ass. Yeah. And nobody's gonna be able to say, well, look here's. Here's Jezebel or there's Jezebel. It's yeah. just going to be just scraps left from the dogs. No tomb, because people people like to have a burial, don't they? Yeah. Where they can go and they could, you know, uh, do what they do, and the, the burial and they got their name and the date where they, they how long they live for. She didn't have that tomb. Exactly. That was a that was a shame for that to happen, then and now. Exactly. And also, um, the scriptures say a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. I kind of sidetracked from where you was going bit by getting on that point, but. Um, they try and find where I was again. Now, because I remember I was talking about the uh, pe people are smoking cigarettes and they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're getting their jab or they're putting in their mask and they're moving their mask to the side and then they're smoking a cigarette. Just illogical behaviour. Exactly. A lot of these people, man, they're walking inconsistency, walking contradiction. They say one thing with their mouth, but in their heart they're doing the complete opposite. Let's say someone, like again, someone says, I want to get healthy, I'm going to go to the gym three nights a week. But then as soon as they come at this gym, they're lighting up a, a cigarette. It don't make no logical sense. It's like, these people, it's like... Um, that's what so I could just say, uh, that's how I got into not, not smoking um, when I was, um, I was about 11. I was doing that and the teacher yeah. said to me, it was exactly what you said. So I stopped smoking because I was going to the gym at 11 years old. Yeah. Not, nothing to do with the truth. Yes, yeah, slucker. Um, I don't. You might have to send it on this number, you know. Fuck it, fuck it. Uh, put, let me let me put this down. Let me put this down. <clears throat> yeah, carry on what you're saying, Ark. Carry on what you're saying. Yeah. Let me let me use this analogy, right? If you wanna, um, let's say you wanna do a, a create a, create a painting or something. I'm gonna use art as an example. If you wanna create a painting, like let's say you wanna paint a field. You've got trees in the field, you've got grass in the field, you've got sky and everything like that. 
what unifies these things together is something called perspective. So you learn how to relate one thing to another. And the better you can do that, the more consistent your picture will look. Yeah, that's just using art as an example. It's a similar principle with people. Like, you can't say you're for this thing and then be doing something that's completely contradictory to it because that makes you a hypocrite. Like, you can't be saying, oh, like we said, I want to get health healthy, I'm going to go gym three nights a week, but yeah, I'm going to be smoking as soon as I come out of the gym. Uh, um, because it doesn't make, it doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. So the, what I'm trying to say is that a lot of people who are in this truth, they're very inconsistent. And that's kind of one of the things that separates a man of the law from people in the world because men of the law, we, 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 we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. We stand on what we believe in. You know what I mean? We stand on what we believe in and we practice what we preach to the best of our ability. And that is what kind of um, keeps us in the good graces of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh because once you start to deviate from that, that's when you start going off. You know what I mean? When you start to um, go contrary to the doctrine, that's what essentially leads you to go off. So, I'm going to read on back in 2nd uh, Ezra's. 2nd Ezra 6 and 58 says, But us, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thine only begotten and fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? And how long shall this endure? So that was a very good question. And as I said before, it's all about measuring the time diligently through the prophecies to understand where we are. But Ezra's got a response from the angel, and the response was the following. Here we are. You got some it says, I think I might have some. Yeah, I've got some. Got some. Carry on, carry on. And it says, um, th the angel gave the answer, verse 7 and 1, second Ezra 7 and 1. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there sent unto me an angel, which would be sent unto me the night of four. And he said unto me, Up Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on my power. Then he said unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put the case that the entrance were narrow like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look through it and to rule it? And if he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? And he says there is another thing also. A city is builded and set up upon a broad field and is full of all good things. And the entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Now that city that's been yeah. spoken of, is um, my new number. Okay. That city that's being spoken of uh, is a metaphor for the kingdom of heaven. So if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven <coughs> and all the good things that are therein, how do we get into it unless we go through the straight gate, which is what Yahweh spoke of. He said, broad is the gate and wide is the way that leadeth unto destruction and many there be that go in there at. But straight is the gate and the narrow you know, is the way. But straight is the way and straight is the oh, yeah. way and narrow is the that's gate fine. which leadeth unto go salvation. Go so you've got to go in at the straight gate, yeah? So that city that is set up on a broad field spoken of in the beginning of 2nd Ezra, the 7th chapter, is a metaphor for the kingdom of heaven. So reading on, it says, The entrance thereof is narrow, verse 7, 2nd Ezra 7 and 7, The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand, and on the left a deep water. And only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall you receive the inheritance? And I said, It is so, Lord, then. then and then he said unto me, Even so is Israel's portion. Now this is an important point because it said, even so is Israel's portion, which means that salvation once again is only for the elect of the nation of Israel and not for you other nations. Because you've got to really think about it, what do you nations need to be saved from? You're, you're living a good life at the moment, you're not in trouble as other men. You're having a good time, you're having, a, as that song from Dirty Dancing says, you're having the time of your lives. While we, on the other hand, we're like Lazarus, the poor man, who have been suffering nothing but um, hardships and affliction all our lives. 
But guess what? Those roles are going to be in first. And we're going to inherit good things because salvation is unto Israel. So it says, Because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed, now that is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail, and they are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure, and brought immortal fruit. See, before Adam transgressed, he was immortal. But through sin, through sin into the world, we all die. The scriptures say, from the woman we gave the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So that was, um, that was the curse. And also, um, when Adam transgressed. And also the scriptures say, in the day that thou sin, that thou shalt die. We know that um, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. And in the scriptures, there's nobody recorded if you've ever lived. More, to a thousand years or above a thousand years. That um, person who lived longest in the scriptures was Methuselah and he lived unto maybe 968, something like that. But yeah, so in a day that we sin, we die. Now our lifespans are a lot shorter than they once were because um, you know our bodies aren't what, what they once were because through the abundance of sin, we've become weaker and weaker over time. But guess what, when your shy comes back, and Lord willing, we be of the elect and we're taken up in the chariots, we're going to get new, new bodies. Yeah, I've said the and those new bodies are not going to be able to sin. So because we don't sin, it means we're not going to die. So once again, we are going to become immortal, as it says here. So it says, verse 13, 2nd Ezra 7, 13. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure, and brought immortal fruit. And if... They that live, labour not to enter into these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. Now therefore, why disquietest thyself, seeing that thou art but a corruptible man? Why art thou moved, whereas thou art but mortal? Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come, rather than that which is present? So this is a good point. The angel saying to him, why don't you consider more the things that are to come rather than that which is at present? Because the things that we see presently are temporal, whereas the things that are <coughs> promised to us by Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, are eternal. That's right, brother. That's the water. And um, again, this comes back to being a spiritual visionary. Somehow, some way, through the gift of you faith, I suppose. Too? Somehow, some way, through the gift of faith, we are somehow able to see, foresee the, the things that are coming, like this, that the perils. You know, the destruction and everything else, we, we, no, we foresaw that. But also we foresee the salvation and the great deliverance and the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai. It, it, it says, um, yeah, verse 16, Second Ezra 7, 16. Right, so Why hast thou not considered out. in thy mind this thing Do that is to come rather than that which is present? So therefore we've got to be kingdom minded. And when you keep your mind focused on, on, on the kingdom, it takes you away from from, Actually, the, from, the, from, from this world. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you've got to have your your bodies in this world, but your but your mind and your spirit should be on on the, on the heavenly things of your how about Shemi how shine. That's just my personal advice or trick for staying stable in this thing, man. Because if you was to if your mind and your whole body and your spirit was in the vibration of this world. It would just be too depressing, man, because you know too much. You know how wicked this place is. It would just drag you down. But yet, when you meditate on the scriptures and the precepts and the things that are to come, the promises that were, that were given unto us by Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai, that lifts up your spirit, man. Which is why when brothers see chariots and stuff like that, it lifts your spirit because it puts your mind back on the vibration that, hey, you know what, man, there is a higher power. And he sees everything that we're going through and that what we're enduring is not in vain. You know, what did Yahweh Shai say? He that endureth and overcome, to him will I grant to sit. Let me get it. This is Revelation. It's all about enduring and overcoming this world. This is it's just, it's just like a test, man. This isn't real life. It's just the trial to see what kind of man or woman you are in this thing. Revelation 2, 25. <coughs> Yeah, Revelation 2.25 But that which ye have already hold fast till I come And he that overcometh And keepeth my works unto the end To him will I give power over the nations And 
initial pull and with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter, they shall be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So we've got to overcome this world, man. And how do we overcome it? What does Micah 2 and 10 say? This is Micah 2 and verse 10. And it says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. See, this world is filthy, man. The scriptures say the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. You know, if you just if you just take a real look at people's actions, man, a lot of people are doing a lot of wicked shit that you probably don't even see or see them. You know, they're not going to tell you they're doing this wickedness, but they're doing it. Let me give a brief testimony. Actually, I was out yesterday, and I had to go to the um, shop at the end of my road, and I just to pick up some basic stuff, you know, some milk from the supermarket or whatever. As I came out of the shop, I was waiting to cross the road, and I saw a house. And in the window of the house, they had one of those symbols. You know, like the symbol that they use for, um, they use a circle and a plus to show a woman, and a circle and an arrow to show a man, something like that. They, they had those symbols of male and female before. Well, in their window, they put up a symbol where it had, it was both in one, and it had three points. It had the symbol with the arrow to show the man, the symbol with the plus to show the woman, and it had two of those, the arrow and the plus combined at the bottom. And it, in the next window, it had um, trans rights now. And in the next window, it said Black Lives Matter. So you had all these fucking wicked doctor, doctrines. It shows you that this whole Black Lives Matter thing is just, it's just, it's just a side of anyway. And it's tied in with this transgender movement. This is, this is the thing. How can you be pro... All right, let's say you're an Israelite, yeah? You know you're an Israelite. How can you be pro so-called Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter is tied hand in hand with the transhumanist, transgender movement. See, you can't be, you can't, you can't be a partaker in wickedness, man. The scriptures say, though a hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. So you can't, again, we were talking about walking contradictions. You're going to call your, you're going to be calling for Black Lives Matter, but yet you're, you're advocating for trans rights too. But yet you're an Israelite. You shouldn't be for that. You can't be for that. Leviticus 20 and, th 20 and 13 states, Man shall not lie with woman as he lie with mankind. Both, shall, both have committed an abomination, their blood shall be upon them. That's a sin unto death. So how can you be saying, oh, I support Black Lives Matter, but yet you're, you're, you're trying to support LGBTQ at the same time? See, walk in contradiction, man. People aren't deep. People aren't deep, man. When you really look at people, and this is the thing, I'm, I'm the kind of type of person who likes to watch people, man. And mm. I've always been this way. I've always been very observant. You just watch people's actions, man and you can see them for what they really are. You, obviously, there's a, we have what's known as spiritual discernment, but there's just, a, people don't even think, how does this, um, you know, how does what I'm doing really add up? When you're the phone, and they're not consistent in what I'm they do, therefore, the they're just, they're like the chaff that's gonna be blown away with the wind, when, the, when that wind comes. And that wind that's gonna come is gonna be a destructive wind, and that is the wind that's being held back, back right now which is spoken of in the book of Revelation. And why is that wind being held back? For the elect's sake. Because the destruction is not going to come until the elect is sealed. So let's keep, keep reading on. <coughs> yeah, back in 2nd um, Ezra 7 verse 17. Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bearest rule, the house ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for wide, which is the situation we're in right now. For they have, that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the wide. And he said unto me, There is no judge above the Most High, and none that have understanding above the highest. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of the Most High that is set before them. For the Most High have given straight commandment to such as came what they should do to live, even as they came, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. And that's very true. And our people, they like to cast, not just our people, but people in general like to cast the words of the Haobar Shemi Shai behind their back and do what they want to do, which again, ties right back into the Alistair Crowley spirit, that spirit that night pushes with the just do it thing, 
because they want to do their own way. It's like, what's wrong with you, man? Sometimes you just got to look at people and say, what's wrong with you, man? Here you have straight commandment and instruction on the ways that you're supposed to conduct yourself on this earth. But you want to do your own thing. You want to be self-willed. And what happened to King Saul when he was self-willed? Not on WhatsApp, though, on your main phone. Right. Yes, just a wrap. It's, um... No, 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 finish what you said, bro. Yeah, like, what happened to King Saul? Does it, does it not say that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft? So when you're rebelling against the, the straight instructions that were given unto you by Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, you're nothing but a witch, man. And what do the scriptures say? Suffer not on which to live. So your ass is going to be put to death if you keep being stubborn and stiff-necked. And the scriptures say that, that Jacob is a stiff-necked people, man. It's, it's sad, but our people are so hard-headed that they're, they're not going to get it, get it until that final death blow strikes. And then they're going to realize after death by pain, because what did it say in 2nd Ezra 9? The same must know it after death yeah. by pain. And you're going to feel ashamed of yourself, man. You're going to be looking at yourself thinking, fuck, man. Why was I doing all that madness? Like, imagine having to look at yourself in the mirror when you come back in the kingdom, knowing that you, you was flipping lip docking with another man on national television. Like that flipping little Nas X idiot. You know, do you think he's going to be proud of his behavior in the kingdom? No, none of them are. Because then they'll have known, um, they will have known after death by pain, as I said, the truth. So let me just check this. I, I just finished that point. That, that point. Yeah, no, um, I just got something else to talk about. Um, different subject matter. I, and, I, and I found this article here on um, the Huffington Post. And what they were talking about is um, the UN, to be exact. The UN is basically saying, or calling on the world to um, give reparations to our people. And, um, you know, for so long, they haven't even came up with that idea. But um, that's okay, because we're not in the reading and no need of it, because we've been doing just fine without it anyway. But, um, you know, I bet to believe the reason why they're, they're calling for the world to give reparations is simply because uh, people are talking, people like ourselves are talking, and um, they're hearing our voices now. And it's like, well, we got to do something about it, because it's actually sort of, a sh you know, a shameful thing to, um, you know, acknowledge that. We've helped every other nation that we've destroyed, mm. but we couldn't help the so-called Negro and give them reparations. You know, and um, that's all prophecy anyway, because the prophecy states that uh, the Lord will um, <clears throat> bring us to a curse because of the sins of our fathers. And uh, for a particular point in time, we would have to serve slavery as we are doing right now. And then the Messiah would return and he'll, and he'll restore the nation himself, according to as it is written, mm. you know? So, um, if you can, brother, go on to it. Right, so this is an article from uh, Huffington Post, I believe. It says, um, bear me a second. Right, so it says, UN Human Rights Chief calls on world to give reparations to black people. See, look, mm -hmm. man, you can see this again. Calling us black people. That's Yeah. If you're going to re do reparations was to repair, why yeah. don't you rep repair... The name. Well, yeah, our name and our history. Yeah. It's lucky I'm, I'm going in. But no, 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 that's all right. That's all right. Go on. Right, it says, to give reparations to black people. Uh -huh. uh, Michelle Barlett's landmark report offers a look at the centuries of mistreatment faced by black people mm -hmm. worldwide, including from the transatlantic slave trade. Yeah. It says, uh, the UN Human Rights Chief, in a landmark report launched after the killing of George Floyd in the United States, mm -hmm. is urging countries worldwide to do more to help end discrimination and i mean you gotta you, you gotta bring to mind and uh consider something that i mean there's been many of our people in america that have been gunned down since since the 1980s to the 1990s and onwards and um never yet has the u.n even came to the conclusion that you know we have to repair these people these are broken people that need repairing and we need to fund these people by any means necessarily but uh now all of a sudden they want to talk about it because like I said, we're talking about certain things that the, that the uh, that they're getting hip to. Because uh, the most watched um, <clears throat> program on the uh, the computer is, is uh, a social media such as YouTube. Everybody's watching it. And you got a lot of Jakes that have formulated their media called the black media, what have you. And they're talking about the dealings of this devil. And um, you know how corrupt this devil is and how racist of, of, of uh, and, and how um, supremistic 
you know, thought some of how these devils really are. You know what I'm saying? So mm. that's what's being spoken about and the mistreatment and all of that. So now they have to talk about reparations. They have to discuss this this uh, this reparations thing. But um, like I said, rep reparations ain't really going to come by. And let's just say that they do give reparations. What is it going to be? Is it going to be money? Because if it's going to be money, then where are they going to get the money from? Mm. That means they're going to have to print the money. And if they print more of the money that they already have, which has already deducted its value anyway, then guess what? It's going to lose more value. And then what you're going to have? Well, hyperinflation. When hyperinflation occurs, prices of your goods skyrocket. So let's just say they do give our people reparations. What are they going to be able to do with the money? Yeah. So it's, it's, all, it's, it's, it's all bullshit at the end of the day. Because the reparations, the Heavenly Father already has that planned. And it's not going to be in the sense of um, the Most High allowing these devils or another nation to repair our nation. That's nowhere near in the scriptures. But what is in the scriptures is that he will do the repairing himself. Okay? Yeah. In the way that it is written. So let's read uh, Isaiah 30, verse 17, brother. Come on. <clears throat> Jeremiah, it's Jeremiah 30 and 17. Right. Salakia. Let me get that one. Jeremiah 30, 17. Yeah. <clears throat> There we go. Mm -hmm. This says, um, For I will restore health unto thee, I will heal thee of thy wounds, yeah. saith the Lord Yahweh. Yeah, and remember that as it is written in the book of Deuteronomy, what is it, I believe it's 32, where the I Lord said I that I am the one that wound and I heal. So again, is it now we can say that Esau did it by his own hand physically. We can go do the research, the historical, you know, mm -hmm. go into all of that stuff, slavery and what they did. But ultimately, the Lord allowed all of that to happen to the point where we became a broken people. To the point where they got to now say, well, we got to give reparations because it looks damnable. And it's a shame unto them now. Mm -hmm. Go on, brother. Yeah, it says, yeah. Um, For I will still health unto thee, mm. and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith Yahweh. Yeah, and what is the wound? The curses. Like, for example, when you read the book of, uh, I believe it's in the book of John, where it makes reference into... The, uh, the what is it, the rich man and the poor man named Lazarus, mm -hmm. where he was wounded at his gate. The curses is talking about. So we're cursed. On <laughs> we're, we're cursed until we can't even come out of the curses. We're not cursed to a smaller degree to where we can, you know, have a you know have some sort of uh, 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 leverage to where we can stand outside of the curses. We can't outstep the curses. Mm -hmm. We can't step out of the curses. It's so powerful. So that's what's really got us down and destroyed and wounded but the lord is going to undo the curses and the way that he's going to do that is by delivering us and, and saving us from out of this bondage that we're serving under this devil and uh, we're going to be delivered and saved okay we're going to be sent back home and then basically these other nations they're going to be our slaves they're going to be our servants and they're going to build up jerusalem but anyway i don't mean to talk too much let's That's right. to this go on it says <clears throat> I will restore health unto thee, yeah. and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith Yahweh, because they called thee outcast. Right. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, <coughs> yeah. whom no man seeketh for after. Yeah, and that's the truth, because we've been outcasted out of the land. The land of Israel is our land. That's that's the, the truth of the matter. When I mean, you go back 2,000 years ago, it wasn't them, 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 them gutter rats over there. It wasn't them, it was us 2,000 years ago. The ones of us that went into the interiors of Africa because of the whole 70 AD situation. Again, how could they have went into 70 AD and hide amongst those dark Africans? It's impossible. So that had to have been talking about that. That right there, the scripture the that the brother just read about us returning back to the land of Israel, that's talking about us. Because in order for them to be the people, they would have to be ousted out of the land in these last days. But they're in the land now. <laughs> so... This would have to pertain to a people that have been outcasted out of the land and that fit the curses all the way from Deuteronomy 28 and onwards. And it's us. Go on, brother. And it says, um, they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Yeah. Thou saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents yeah. and have mercy on his dwelling places. Mm -hmm. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap yeah. and, the pla and the palace shall remain after the man manner thereof. So when you're talking about reparation, see, we're going to get back to the land. So that's reparation in itself. And the land is going to be built back up in the way that as if it was in the, in the days of old. But who's going to build the land? 
our oppressors are going to build the land. If you can, brother, give me Isaiah 14 and 2. Come. All the oppressors that we've been under, which makes up all of these other nations, including the modern day oppressor, which is of, of today, the Edomites, they're going to be in slavery under us. And they're going to be building our, our altars and our walls up. And they're going to be building our empire. Just like how we made Great Britain, we put the great in Britain, they're going to, they're going to put the great in Israel. They're going to make us great. And they won't be able to do nothing about it. There's not going to be no revolts. They're just going to straight do what we tell them to do. Because this time when we rule, we're going to be ruling with complete, absolute power. That no other nation is being able to possess on the face of this earth. Go on, brother. Right, this is Isaiah 14 from verse 1. Yeah. For your howl will have mercy on Jacob, and we yet choose Israel, yeah. and set them in their own land. So there's many precepts and verses that talk about, if you notice, as, we, as the scripture says in Isaiah 28 and 9, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, right? And also David said, I, I gain understanding through thy precepts. So if you go from precept to precept on the topic of us returning back to the land, that's a, that's a good ass topic. And you'll spend a, 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 long, a long amount of time finishing that topic. That's a, that's a lengthy topic right there mm -hmm. of a video. Go on, brother. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel mm. and set them in their own land. And we're the Israelites. Those people indeed. over there in, in the land of Israel today, they're not the Israelites. And, and um, even just by what they call themselves, they call themselves Jewish. The term ish means to pertain to. Now, if I say, so, if I say to somebody, oh, you're childish, am I saying <laughs> that they're a child? No. They're acting like a child, childish. So they're not the people. We're the people. Go on, brother. Um, it says, and um, I, I'll, I'll yet choose <clears throat> Israel and set them in their own land. Yeah. And the strangers shall be joined with them, uh -huh. and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Yeah. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Uh -huh. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and for handmaids. Yeah. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. So we're going to take them captives whose captives we were. So the same people that enslaved us, we're going to wind up enslaving as well. 